Hi guys, this is section 5 where we talk about conditional derivations. So now let's consider the following example, a, a, an argument. If you are Pope, then you have a home in Vatican. If you have a home in Vatican, well then you hear church bells often. Therefore, if you are Pope, then you hear church bells often. How do we formalize this or transfer this into our language? And how do we prove this argument or how do we show that this argument is a valid argument? Okay, so let's start with uh, picking out the atomic sentences. You are Pope is, let's call it sentence S. You have a home in Vatican, let's call this sentence T. If you have a home in Vatican, well, this is again T, then you hear church bells often. So this is a new sentence, let's call it U. And therefore, if you are Pope, uh, the, the sentence is S, then you hear church bells often. Well, we already know that this sentence is U. All right, so there are three atomic sentences and this argument can be written as S implies T, T implies U, therefore S implies U. Is this a valid argument? All right, so how do we prove this? As usual, write down the premises. Premise number one, S implies T. All right, this is the premise number one. Two, T implies U. This is the second premise. And I would like to reach to the conclusion S implies U. All right. How do I prove S implies you? Well, let's remember the um, truth table of S implies you. If you remember um, the truth table, let's construct it very quickly. So S can be true, U can be true, true, false, false, true, false, false. And if you remember, S implies U is true everywhere except this case. All right, so what does that mean? That means S implies U is a true statement as long as S is a false statement. All right, so if S is false, then this implication is true. Good. What about uh, if S is true? Well, if S is true, well, then there's only one way that this conditional sentence is true, which is you must be true as well. Hmm. So therefore, I'm going to ignore the case where S is false, because I know uh, under this assumption, I mean, when S is false, well, whether U is true or not, this, this implication is going to be true anyway. So I will only look at the case where S is true. So suppose S is true. So suppose S. We call this assumption for conditional derivation. All right. Well, the thing is, I can now use um, these two premises and also this new premise, but this new premise, be careful, it doesn't have to be true. I am just assuming that it is true. So now I am in line four. What can I deduce from this? Given the premise S implies T is true, given that S is true, so I, by modus ponen, I must have T is also true. So modus ponen, uh, by the arguments one and, and three. What else? Well, given T implies U is true and T is true, in line five, I can deduce that U must be true as well. And this is also modus ponen, the rule that I used. So by the uh, statements in line two and, and four. Perfect. So what do I have? I have the following. If S is true, well, you must be true as well. Very good. If S is true, you must be true as well. And hence, this S implies U is true. 
Remember, if s, if s is false, I don't care about the truth value of u, my statement will be true anyway. So therefore, I can conclude that, um, I'm sorry, this is uh, 6. I can conclude that s implies u is correct. All right, so there's one thing uh, which is very important for uh, for conditional derivations is that I have this sort of uh, a, 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 a box which we call subproof. Um, normally, in any line, line seven, I can use all the previous lines again and again, meaning they must be true. But when I have a conditional derivation and a subproof like this, I cannot refer back to those statements because those statements are not necessarily true. I mean, S doesn't have to be true, right? In fact, S is you are Pope. Are you the Pope? No, you're not. So therefore, S is actually not true, okay? In this specific example. And so in general, it may or may not be true. Here, what I shown is if S is true, you must be true, but maybe S is wrong, a false. So therefore, I cannot, for example, say uh, line seven, S, repeat line three. I can't do that. I can't repeat line one, line two. I can repeat line six, as many as I like, but I can't repeat uh, any lines in between three and five, okay? Um, so one final thing, uh, this conclusion, which is what I was trying to uh, achieve, we call this conditional uh, derivation. All right? And so this is how we prove a conditional, uh, uh, a, a, an argument with a, a conclusion, with, with a conclusion with a conditional sentence.